Welcome to the Solar Thermal Systems section of Introduction to Renewable Energy. In this section we'll be talking about solar thermal systems, which are renewable energy systems that use energy from the sun to heat water or air. When the sun is out, the system is working to heat water normally heated by natural gas, propane, biomass, or electricity for domestic use or for space heating. We'll discuss how it works, system components, system types, and the solar resource. So, how do solar domestic hot water systems work? The easiest way to understand a solar water heating system is to look at its most simplistic form, an integrated collector storage, ICS, or batch collector. An ICS collector is a 40 or 50 gallon tank that is painted flat black and placed inside an insulated box with an angled glass top that is placed facing south. The black color attracts the sun's heat, the glass top allows the heat to enter the box, and the insulated box acts as a hot box, causing the water to heat up inside the collector as the sun shines on it. The system components vary widely, but essentially the system is divided into two parts, the collector and the balance of system, which would be all the other parts of the system. The balance of system components can include the piping, the heat transfer fluid, a heat exchanger, a storage tank, an expansion tank, a pressure gauge, a check valve, a circulation pump, a pressure relief valve, and a mixing valve. The balance of system components will depend on how complicated the system is based on your choices as a homeowner. No matter what balance of system components you have, to make the system cheaper, the balance of system should be placed as close to the array as possible. There are two major modern types of collectors, flat plate collectors and evacuated tube collectors. The collector array you use on your home or business can consist of a single collector or multiple collectors. The collector array must be placed in direct sun and be oriented facing within 15 degrees of true south in order to optimize the performance by getting the most direct sun exposure possible. The flat plate collectors are insulated, weatherproof boxes constructed of durable material, usually aluminum. The box has a glazing on one face, which is made of tempered glass. Below this is a grid work of pipes that are attached to a thin copper plate. The copper plate, which in the industry is referred to as an absorber plate, absorbs the solar energy and transfers it to the grid work of pipes where a solar fluid is circulating. Evacuated tube collectors are made of parallel rows of glass tubes. Each tube has an outer layer of glass and an inner absorber. The reason it's called an evacuated tube is because all of the air has actually been evacuated out. This creates a vacuum that acts like insulation and allows the absorber to get hotter. In this animation, we're going to take a closer look at what happens with a closed loop antifreeze system, which is the most common in northern climates. Here we see in blue the domestic water loop, which comes into the system via the cold water supply. It makes its way to the heat exchanger, where it is warmed up by the solar fluid loop pass through the solar storage tank that sits as a preheat before it makes its way to the traditional water heater. At the same time, the solar loop is moving. Here we see it making its way to the solar collectors still cold. When it reaches the solar collectors, it flows through the manifold at the bottom of the collectors, up the riser tubes, and across the manifold at the top heating up the more time it is exposed to the sun. The solar loop then makes its way to the heat exchanger where it transfers the heat to the domestic water loop it meets there. The solar fluid can be water, which is the most efficient at transferring heat, but in northern climates it is usually a mixture of propylene glycol and water mixed solution. Propylene glycol is a food grade, non-toxic antifreeze that is commercially available. Antifreeze is used in response to the cold winter months experienced. If pipes freeze, they could burst, leaving the solution all over your home, inside or out. So it is better to have an antifreeze mix, even though it is not as great of a heat transfer fluid as water. Circulation pumps push the solar fluid through the collectors, through the piping, and to the heat exchanger and back to the collectors. The heat exchanger transfers the heat from the solar fluid to the water. Hot fluid from the solar collectors is pumped through the heat exchanger, which is either in or next to the water storage tank. The system is connected to the normal water heater system, if it is to be used for domestic hot water uses. The system preheats the water that would otherwise be heated by the normal water heater, 
and then it is mixed in with the cold water for the temperature that you want. You can actually make use of solar electricity with the system by putting on a PV panel to power the circulation pumps. You only want the fluid to circulate through the collectors when the sun is out. A PV panel would ensure that when the sun was not out, it would not run, and when the sun was out and able to heat the solar fluid, the pumps would run, moving the heated solar fluid through the system to your home. There are many different configurations of systems. Some systems heat the water for domestic uses, such as showers, dishwashing, clothes washing, or pool use. Some systems heat the home. Different types of systems available for domestic home water include closed loop antifreeze and drain back systems. Closed loop antifreeze systems use the solar fluid in a loop separate from the loop used for your water supply. And a good thing too, as you probably don't want to open the tap and drink some antifreeze, even if it is food grade and non-toxic. The solar fluid loop will cycle from the solar thermal panels to the heat exchanger, which will heat a separate solar storage tank, and then go back again to the panels, while the domestic hot water loop will come from the cold water supply to the solar storage tank, mixing with the water heated by the solar fluid, and then out to the traditional water heater. Because of the antifreeze solution, they are not affected by freezing conditions. They are also not susceptible to mineral buildup since they are not using water. This type of system can be PV powered as mentioned before. This particular system type essentially has only one or two moving parts, which makes for less maintenance. One wear point is the antifreeze solution, which will degrade over time. There is some heat loss during the heat transfer. This is the reason that the drain back system was created to recover some of that heat loss. Drain back systems use distilled water as the heat transfer fluid, which as we've discussed is much more efficient at transferring heat than the propylene glycol solution. The distilled water is pumped throughout the system when the sun is available to heat. When there isn't sun, the water drains back into a small holding tank. This type of system works well and can withstand moderate freezing, but if there is a problem with any of the mechanisms that help the system drain back, then the entire system will fail and pipes will freeze and burst. There are other types of systems that we will discuss very briefly. Some systems heat a space. Many types of existing space heating systems can be modified to integrate solar, including radiant floors, forced air furnaces, high mass systems, and the preheating of fresh makeup air. In a retrofit, you can integrate solar into your space heating. In new construction, you can plan for it. This would be a perfect application for a high mass system. In this type of heating, you bury tubing in a bed of sand under the flooring so that the heat radiates slowly upward over time. Another type of system is a combination system. A combination solar heating and solar domestic hot water system maximizes the collector array for space heating in the winter. A combination system has a tendency to run very hot in the summer when no space heating is necessary. So you will need a shunt loop or summer load to avoid degradation of the solar fluid. My personal favorite summer load would be a hot tub. In order to fully understand the system requirements for solar thermal systems and solar electric systems, we have to understand a little bit about the sun and solar resource. The Earth's tilt compared to the sun changes seasonally. The Earth's northern latitudes are tilted toward the sun from June to August, making more solar radiation available in the summer. Solar water collectors and PV modules should face the south and be mounted at an angle to the sun that will maximize their performance and be in the direct sun with no shading from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. One way to determine if you have good sun in a location is to imagine a big window in the sky directly south of your collectors. The solar window is defined by the path of the sun across the sky throughout the year. A tree with leaves will block up the sun's energy, reducing the amount of solar radiation that you will get on your panels. For a system that needs to produce year-round, it is best to tilt the array at the same angle as your latitude. For solar space heating systems and combination systems, you would mount at latitude plus 15 degrees to optimize the performance for the winter sun, which is lower on the horizon. The best way to ensure that your system is placed where it ought to be is to get a site assessment done by a professional. A site assessor first looks at efficiency measures to reduce the water consumption and is trained to know all the considerations that would affect the production of the system you want. That is it for this section, but if you want to know more about solar thermal systems, you may want to check out some of our other courses. 
Two courses that may be of interest are ST050 Primer on Solar Water Heating or ST101 Solar Domestic Hot Water. If you're interested in installing your own system, you'll want to have your site assessed by an MREA Site Assessor Certificate holder. You can find the list of site assessment professionals at www.mreacsa.org. In the next section, we'll be discussing photovoltaics or solar electric systems.